And uh, this is SMB Smart 24 TV continues with us right here. And we're going to be calling again for the business tips. Make sure you be a part of uh, what inspires you and motivates you every morning and every day that comes your way. Now, take a listen and take a look at the business tips we can do return to discuss with you on this one. Day brings new opportunities for you to conquer the business world. Start your day with the show that drives your business. Be the first to know the latest prices around town. The latest business information around the country and the world. We bring you in-depth analysis with exclusive interviews from your key players. And of course, wouldn't you want that for your morning? Get up to speed with what is trending in the business world all in one morning show. Smart means business with your favorite guy, Joram Paul Sonko. And Rita Cavanero. Every weekday, Mondays to Friday from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. As we drive you into the business world. This is my 24. For the business insight where we bring to you smb insight jerome what do we have for our insight this and day? Uh, in today's insight we look at the digital tax stamps that were introduced by the uganda revenue authority as a more better way to actually help in uh, checking out more of uh, the different commodities and also enhance tax mobilization and collection across the country when it comes to the retailers manufacturers as well as the wholesalers and as a matter of fact we would want you to actually understand what the digital tax stamp means and what it entails and of course with our SMB insight we'll first look at the meaning of the digital tax stamps as Simon Masembe Michael Masembe rather uh, the supervisor tax education at URA takes us through tax stamps uh, at times we call it the digital tracking solution uh, is uh, a solution uh, owned by both Uganda Revenue Authority and the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. Uh, the solution seeks to uh, prove the authenticity uh, of the product on which this stamp is affixed and secondly uh, to confirm that the goods have paid taxes. So the, the DTS, the tax stamps, or the stamps as we look at them, uh, prove two things. One, conformance to the standards of, uh, accepted within our country that the goods are safe for the market and the consumers. And two, that these uh, goods or the product has been declared for taxes at Uganda Revenue Authority. And why do we say that? Uh, the, the purpose of bringing up this solution is part of a broader national agenda, which we have called the Domestic Revenue Mobilization Strategy. The national agenda is to safeguard the leakage of revenue, that is one, to protect businesses, because it is from sustaining businesses that we have revenue paid. Well, from uh, the digital tax stamp issue, you could definitely see that uh, according to the Uganda Revenue Authority, they mm. looked at it as a way of one to protect their business. And uh, protecting your business takes you back to how you do your accountability. And more so when you have a product 
and it has a digital stamp you can easily tell remember these codes belong to you mm. as a retailer so they make codes that are quite different from the others mm. so, and it also helps mm. you beat up the market mm. in regards to the originality or in regards to the genuinity of um, or genuine of the product mm. or the service you're offering for example i may want to purchase okay let me not talk about the tab mm. but a paper we have got mm. rims in the market or rims on market mm. that we uh, purchase but there is that particular entity or identity that you are bound to be having if mm. you are stamped uh, digitally mm. and uh, the other person in the market with you is selling on you know the same product but is not having a digital stamp so if you are a comes on board and remember it's uh, on the move it's doing campaigns even reaching out most districts even deep down around the country and telling you and uh, about the digital stamp then you and BS uh, comes out to say okay uh, quantified products have got this particular identities at least maybe digital stamp mm -hmm. or even the UNBS stamp and if you do not have that that's not a genuine uh, market produce or product or service you will realize that Sonko if you're not having the digital stamp you're going to go out of the market because if as a consumer I hear that highlight I'm going to be coming looking for the uh, stamped uh, product or any sealed product or service perhaps if there is mm -hmm. any and you'll be out of the market mm. but is it a purpose or is it of uh, any purpose or reason about introducing these digital stamps let us now look at what purpose entails out of the introduction of the digital stamp purpose of bringing these tax stamps uh, the digital tracking solution in play is one to kick out the producers of counterfeit products because when I meet a, st a stamp or a product with a stamp, I'm able to know this is a genuine product. And the counterfeiter won't have an, uh, any option of accessing these stamps. That is one, protection of local manufacturers. Two, to kick out unfair competition. Still, that unfair competition coming from persons bringing onto the market goods that have eluded paying taxes. So the producer, the supplier of goods that have been declared for taxes is slightly obviously paying a higher, I mean, charging a higher price compared to the other who has not declared such products for, uh, to URA for taxes, be it a manufacturer or, a or an importer, because still this applies to both locally manufactured and imported goods. So, we want to protect him, he or she, who chooses uh, the uh, divisible option of declaring the, these goods to URA for taxes. Protect him that within the market, it's his or her products that are given the opportunity uh, to be brought to the consumers. Protect them from unfair competition, that is one. Make sure the goods in the market are genuine, so we are protecting our, uh, our consumers and the public from consuming such, uh, such products. Ultimately, for us as URA, yeah, in that case, we are able to have, take a correct and accurate stock of what is being produced in the country and therefore charge appropriate revenue. That is one. Two, we will have uh, genuine stats, accurate stats on production in the country. Uh, it would have been, uh, I will tell you, uh, years ago, years before the implementation of the, the DTS solution, it was really hard to put a finger on the actual number of products within a, pro a particular production line that are being uh, produced within the country. Right now, we are able to provide that number. The stats can tell us very well. If we want to know the actual volume of the products getting uh, off a certain production line, the imports that are coming in with the stamps, we are able to, to, to tell that. And I think it is very good uh, in the effort of uh, enhancing domestic revenue mobilization. 
And exactly that is uh, very right because uh, URA was being cheat towards uh, the revenue collection there. Mm. Am I not right mm. or are we, are we not right around there? Well, I think it is uh, quite evident for a producer who will come out and tell you, I have supplied a hundred bottles, mm -hmm. then you tax the hundred that you've seen on the invoice. Yet maybe he has, he has produced, actually produced or supplied over 200 of them. So getting the others tax free. And then they look at the situation whereby there are a lot of fake products on the market. And now the better way to actually prevent is uh, to actually get back to, let's say mainly, if you look at uh, a local producer. Mm -hmm. For the local producers, uh, it is not only going to help the local producers identify uh, their market because the fake markets also affect the producers if you mm. produce your products and then you find out that someone is actually compete out competing your products Moreover but giving with a fake, fake one, one mm. uh, it actually tarnishes your name or tarnishes your brand so it takes you back to uh, how are you going to end up you know selling your brand when they are already fake products that are even more cheaper because fake products are always cheaper uh, it is very difficult to find a, a fake product that is more expensive than the original. Mm -hmm. Though in some scenarios, that, there are all those that know how to market their fake products. They make it seem like as if it's the original mm -hmm. by making it more expensive. But, but you know you can mm -hmm. as well get some original product on mm -hmm. maybe just on the street because we have mm -hmm. a mentality that m most of the people have got a mentality that mm -hmm. things sold on the street or by the road in regards to maybe automobile, electronics, mm -hmm bound to be um, fake, yeah. they are not genuine. Even the earphones you buy on the street will, will, will be spoiled within a week. But These do you know you can get, after okay, you at a 10%, to at a 10% mm. you could get actually Mayflak something genuine. You. But in most cases you will find out uh, that even this, uh, the ones who are selling don't know that it's original. So for him he feels he's just selling to make the money. Mm -hmm. That is where I've also actually uh, been surprised at a time. I happened to buy something quite cheaper. And, and then I got to realize it has time. been there for about, no, I happened to buy, I think, a sweater, uh, if I'm to remember, <laughs> way back in 2018. A sweater can leave. A, a a black, no, it was more of a black sweater shirt. You know, it's uh, in a form of uh, a sweater, mm, but then it mm. is a shirt. Mm. I happened to live with it for more than uh, five years now. Surprisingly, it, when I told the person I bought it at around 1, eight, no 7,000, Okay. shillings uh, they were like no that is supposed to be around 40,000 I told them no it was just a 7,000 because it was you know these local markets that happen once a week mm, the, weekly um, the weekly markets that happen so I went in there about it and the person was like okay 7,000 you bring the money mm. now surprisingly even up to now I still wonder because the durability still beats my understanding how I could get that at a very cheap price. So is that mm. what, that's what you call luck. Mm. But anyway, there is always, uh, at some percentage, something genuine may occur, may you know, be reflected mm. even when we are selling from the streets or even when you're producing um, non or non qualitable uh, and quantitable uh, stuff or services, at least one or two might come out to be um, a default around there for mm. genuine. And how to access the digital stamp, you will there, uh, therefore have to listen to this one on how you would want to access the digital stamp or accessing the stamp. Do you have to go to the district? Do you have to go to the local authorities to access it? Do you have to be on radio just listening or you have to be in your shop? How do you really access the digital stamp? Let us have a listen on this, we do return available when they, you just go to the URA website and you register under the Kakasa solution, the digital, uh, digital tracking solution, you declare how much you think you're going to be producing and then you pay the taxes via the same platform, I mean the, for the stamps via the same platform and you can pick the, the stamps from SIGPA Uganda uh, around it in the stretcher. Well, well, when you look at that, you can still get it on the URA portal and mm. uh, make sure you go and uh, as well or to Tinder stretcher offices of URA uh, to get this particular uh, digital tax stamp. So it shouldn't be, uh, an, uh, let's say, a reason for you to come out and say, well, I couldn't access the digital tax stamps. That is why I have products on the market that are not having them. And uh, furthermore, when you look at some of the other products that are going to be focused more, this particular year, URA is going to focus on the non-alcoholic beverages. 
So mm. the sodas and all that will now start having the digital stamps with them and also the fermented uh, beverages will also be having them. The other time they were looking at alcoholic beverages uh, whereby the people who have been drinking whisks and uh, uh, let's say wines and beers have been having these stamps on. Now they're also going to target the more of uh, the non-alcoholic beverages. I believe this is where the biggest mm. market so base the is. The soft drinks. Mm. Okay then. And then that, uh, there, that there goes for the digital stamping. At least you have got knowledge, you have got an idea how to get it, who is responsible and what comes out in case you do not have it. You're bound to lose at some point to be out of the race of com uh, effective competition Petition if you really want a business implemented or effective business around there. And now we head into our business tip. Make sure you stick around and you come share idea with us. Learn, pick something and implement it in your business. organized to achieve business success you need to be organized it will help you complete tasks and stay on top of things to be done and a good way to be organized is to create a to-do list each day as you complete each item check it for uh, check it off your list this will ensure that you are not forgetting anything and completing all the tasks that are essential to survival for your business hmm. Well, getting organized is very important for the business. Do you and, do it to do uh, even, this? So even cool. when you're being employed, mm. it may not necessarily mean you are a business person or you're self-employed. It goes back to your organization as an individual. And uh, I've seen even from the, uh, from the grassroots of schools, mm. uh, teachers have always been encouraging uh, the students as well as the pupils at all levels to continue getting that organization done because organization starts with your mental organization how organized are you in your thoughts and how are you organized when it comes to what you're going to to actually achieve so in, in most cases when you look at uh, organization hmm. it may not uh, necessarily entail you to be organized by your dress code hmm. but how are you organizing your work how are you do, uh, dealing because with your business people normally uh, enjoy or get so attracted to a more organized business by let's say a customer will actually look at three boutiques at the same time and mm -hmm. then there will always be a boutique that is eye-catching mm -hmm. and then believe me they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't want to go to a boutique that is not at least well organized in the way they've actually aligned these clothes uh, when you look at these dummies how have you placed them which clothings do you have with you they will definitely go and choose uh, that particular boutique that has a more organized uh, way or at least maybe the person inside the boutique has aligned these clothings better let's say having coats this side having jackets the other side even you you can actually go to a shop where you will see a bar of soap here there is a loaf of bread here <laughs> so you can see and the shelves have to be aligned happening. well it is mm. happening and organization is key by the way by it and that goes for with products that. or mm. productions or products but then for services we've got players who are doing services how do you get organized you have to make sure for example if you're going digital or you're embracing mm. uh, maybe technology that could be use of internet or social media if you're having a website for example can you at least make sure you have displayed for us proper um, entities or proper unlined and also highlights big highlights because there are things that are necessary that I wouldn't want to know about and you're just highlighting them fast there so organization is key and um, if you're to follow maybe the pyramid what is important less important uh, what is not important so always try to throw out their uh, demonstrate market put out mm. the most important always the less important follows and what is not important it is always not important though it can be a lesson to learn if it's not important but also there was another high later about a to-do list mm. what is a to-do list if you could uh, let us know about the, the to-do list so cool. well when you look at the to-do list is uh it takes us back to for instance we are now officially into a new month mm -hmm. so a to-do list is going to help you um, make a simple 
look up of what you want to do or what you want to achieve at a certain uh, period of time. Mm. For instance, when the new year comes up, everyone has got their visions or new, uh, new ideas that they, they want to, to actually prove by the end of the year. You have a business that you want and you have your targets. So a to-do list sets targets for your business or sets targets for you as an individual. And you're like, well, at the end of the month of March, I am supposed to have achieved this. I'm supposed mm. to have made this particular profit. So by the end of the month, now for instance, as February came to an end, it is on a day like this that you need to go back and draw and see whether your to-do list has matched up to your expectations by the end of February. So the to-do list is important in your organization. The good mm. thing is actually coming up under the organization part of it because it entails you to get organized. An organization comes with what are you going to do on a particular day or to help you achieve a particular thing so and speaking about achieving you have to make sure this is jotted down for not being forgetful and if you want to have a very effective to-do list you have to get uh, um, a pen you have to get a notebook and jot it down you could do it weekly you could do it on a daily basis for example it depends if you are that person who goes to work every day and you want to have a really productive day you've got to draft down jot down some of the key uh, factors or some of the key um, maybe services you're going to be doing uh, just highlight the day how it will be this in mm. turn will uh, distance you from unnecessary calls and unnecessary pressure pressure acts or pressure groups because you might have an appointment at maybe 11 o'clock and then a friend gives you a call that hey Sonko can we meet up somewhere mm -hmm. but because you have drafted for what you're going to do during the day you will say no I have an appointment at this particular hour after that I'm doing this so maybe can we meet up later for your day to be productive uh, whereas if you do not have anything you're following up for the day or for the week someone will just call you hey Sonko can mm -hmm. we can I um, can I come visit over the weekend you will simply say okay yes please come on but you didn't consider, remember, even a person going to visit you on, on weekend, you have to budget for that. Because mm. if on your weekend, for example, you're always eating up your vegetables, you're eating your beans, for example, you might want to impress a visitor by, you know, purchasing meat. And mm. that will come again with an extra cost. And if you didn't, uh, you didn't budget that earlier on the week as you're planning, it's going to um, cost on your saving or it's going to cost on your income at that moment. So a to-do list is very key to do, away, uh, whether weekly, whether daily or monthly at least, put something down for you to follow up. Well, and uh, with that, you can look at that organization. How organized are you for the month of March? How willing? Lee, are you going to achieve these dreams? Indeed, it's uh, coming these, at a very uh, great time. It's mm, just the beginning of the month. You need to get your month. organization done. Mm. Make that list and uh, you're good to go. And we take a break. SMB continues after the break. We'll be engaging with a topical discussion, discussing more uh, towards a genuine system on, um, on internet and data services. Stick around with us. We return. <laughs> 